So today I am going to <clears throat> show you that how you can use REST assured for the API automation. Okay, so I will do two things because you have already, all of you have already done the automation of Selenium. You are aware about that, what is Maeva and what is TestNG. Okay, so today I'm going to do two things. I will start with the framework part as well as I, in that framework, I will include the REST assured part. Okay, so everybody tell me how we can create a Maven project. File, you can say with me, file, other, Maven project. Next. Very good. When you try to speak with me, it motivates me that you are listening. Next. And here we type some keyword so that we can. Yes. And uh, if you, uh, I also not remind that keyword, that is our type. We start something like that. Yeah, maybe an archetype quick start. So I can do one thing. I can do one thing. I also. Uh, da, da, da. I have written, I have written somewhere, somewhere. I, I always, I forget that thing where I return somewhere. Da, 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 da. Oh, this one, this one, this one. So let me copy this from here. Let me go to here. Let me paste it here. So what is your, uh, so sometime maybe uh, uh, something is coming in your mind that why I use this quick start. So actually what happens that whenever you are creating a Maven framework, Maven uh, project you are creating. So Maven, uh, is a thing uh, with the help of me when you can create your Java project. Now, the thing is that when you create a Java project with the help of Maven, you have to one option that what type of facility and what type of structure you by default want to in your Java project. So when I'm saying that Maven archetype quick start, it means I want the quick start feature. Only the quick start feature means I, I want to get all the features in my Maven project. With the help of that, I can quickly start my automation. So that's why I've used this Maven archetype. Okay, so now click on next and then you can decide some artifact ID. So artifact ID, what is artifact ID? Yes, so artifact ID is actually the name of your project. So I'm just giving the name 18th complete automation API, complete automation API automation. Okay. Uh, here we can say, yeah, 18 complete automation, uh, 18 complete automation, complete automation API batch. I think you can see. Okay. So now I will click on, uh, artifact ID is actually in the name of the project. Now with the help of group ID, you can actually by default decide the name of the package. Okay. So here, what happens that if you will give any group ID name, you will see that part of group ID is automatically used in the package section. So what is the package when, when it will create a Java project for you by default, it will create this package for you. Are you getting my point? So if you want to modify the name of your default package, you can do it here also. And if you want to do it after creating the project, you can do it. You have both the options. Okay. So I'll do one thing. Let me let it create with the, this default one. Click on finish. Is it okay? So it, this is the, you can say first approach to create the, your Maven project. So I've created this Maven project. You will see in the Maven project by default, it is shown you this package. Yes or no? Are you able to see this package? Yes. Because this was generated at the time of, you can say, creating the project. If you are not satisfied, you can delete it. Okay. So I told you that you can change at that time also. So best thing is that <clears throat> I want to show you from the scratch, everything in the API framework also. So I'm just deleting this one. I will show each and every uh, package that which you have to create in your project. So now this is the thing that you have created a Maven project. Now, first of all, you want to automate the API with the help of REST assured. So you know that why we have created the Maven project? Because we know that with the help of Maven project, we don't need to download REST assured related API manually. We can set in the dependency part. Yes or no? With the help yeah. of dependency, we can achieve it. <coughs> so you can do it. You can do, you can uh, directly go to the internet and here you have to type rest assured maven dependence. Is it okay? Rest assured maven dependence. So when you click on it, rest assured maven dependency, you will go to the official website of the maven and you click it. So it is a rest assured. Now you can click on it. And when you click on it, you can get all the Maven related API with the version. You can choose any 
any version from here. Okay. So if you if you want, I have already. You can say same thing. You can copy what you can copy from here. You can click on any version. Like take the example. You can copy on the uh, five point this one. And you, when you click on the version, you will see this one. Are you able to see this one? And what is here in the rest is showed. If you want to use this version, copy this tag, and you have to paste in the dependency part. Yes or no? Yes. So this is with the version five point one point zero. I have not used this version previously. Okay, because this uh, version was you can see latest release. Okay, so now before that, what version I've used? Uh, let me show you. So you can do the things on the both the version. Okay, here you can say which version I've used for, of the rest assured four point three point two. So I'm aware about that this is version is very stable. So I'm using this version, but there is no difference. Okay, you can use both the version. You can do one thing if you want to try. You can try with the five point three version also. Is it okay? And if you face any challenge, you can ping me. Okay, you can ping me. So this time, I have updated uh, sir, this Kritika one. Sir, Kritika, this time. Yeah, Kritika, tell me. Yeah. So there must be some, you know, new features or new additions in yes, yes. this new version. So yes. why is it, you know, why this new version is, uh, uh, you know, uh, it is come came in the market. Yes. So that it thing is, is that. Yeah. yeah. The thing is that whenever new version comes, there are so many reasons behind that. One reason is that what happens that because Rust Assured is written in a Java, right? And what happens that one, uh, what happens whenever Java version increases, so they also make uh, try to make the compatible code of the Rust Assured also. Like you can take the example. Currently we are using Java eight. In the future now you can say uh, Java. I think Java uh, fourteen, fifteen. I think that is also released in the market. So now if we are using the old version, that will be compatible with the old version. And maybe when we are releasing the new version, rest assured should be compatible with that. Yes or no? Are you getting my point? Yes yeah, or no? Yeah. So this yeah. is the first reason. Second reason is that whatever you are telling, that is also the second reason. That first of all, rest assured will try to maintain that with the latest version of the Java, they should also compatible. Second thing is that whenever they release new version, definitely maybe when they are releasing new version, they can add new. Features also. So whenever we, what we can do, whenever we need that any new feature, if we are not able to uh, find a particular solution in my old version, we can update it anytime. You know that how simply you have to change this. One. Yes or no? Are you getting my point? Yes. So you can you have a choice that you can use the four point three and you can be, uh, go beyond that. But you have to make sure because rest assured these all the things are open source. So you have to make sure that this should be very very stable. Okay, so we are using a four point three, but if you want to use, you can use five point three also. Okay, so uh, in the upcoming session, I will also update you what new things are available in the new ones. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. Now I will come to the. You can say I will come to the framework part. So uh, the first thing what you have done, you have created a Maven project. Then you have uh, added the rest assured API there. Now what uh, what else we have to update here? Because I told you we are going to create the Framework also. So in the framework, what other things we use? We use test ng. Yes or no? Yes, yes. or no? We use test ng as well as we are going to use the if event stake report that is called extend report that we can also use on API also. So let me uh, use this one also. So we have added three things. So it means rest in rest assured we are using rest assured API. One thing test ng we are using. Okay, second thing and for the extend report we are using. Is it okay? So three things we are going to use to make my project efficient. Is it okay? So your configuration uh, in terms of dependency that is that. Now we will come to the structure part of our framework. So in the first structure, first thing you have to do. Again, I told one. Again, I want to repeat this thing that I have told you that whenever you are creating the Maven project, okay, if somebody is not talking, somebody is not uh, saying anything or asking, they can be on mute. Okay. So now. Whenever you are create any Maven framework, I told you that there are two parts of the Maven project. Maven project every time try to give you two options: SRC main Java and SRC test Java. So you can write the code in the SRC main Java as well as you can write the code in the SRC test Java. So it is a recommended, not mandatory that always you should create the framework using SRC test. Java. So I will right click on this and hold the structure, all the structure of my framework. I will create under SRC test. Java. So my first package will be com dot org dot test. This will be my one package. Well, my first package will be 
com org test one package second package i will create what can anybody tell me same thing i told you in the time of selenium that always whenever you are going to create com dot org dot base yes or no or you can say main com org base package or you can say base then you create finish yes or no anybody can uh, tell me uh, the other package which package we use in selenium we have used com org test for storing the test cases com org base so that we can create the base part of your test ng like if whatever we want to achieve before uh, before running the test case after running the test that can we write the code and the com org base definitely in the in the uh, rest assured we are not going to launch the browser but we have to achieve few other things like reporting yes or no Yes. Yes or no? So that we are yes. going to do that we are going to save in the com org base structure. Okay. Now the other thing is that in our framework, definitely we are going to use some test data also. So we need a com dot org dot utils package. So in, in the utils package, u t i l s in the utils package, I will write my common code. So basically, I have created three packages. Rest of the things I will tell you when I will proceed with the framework. So let me first of all come to the com org test package. I will click right click. I will create first my first class. This one I will name the class. Uh, name the class on the basis of my type of API. Like I will uh, take the example. Uh, get based API test. Okay, I am taking the example of get this API test, but I will advise you whenever you are creating, you are going to create the name of the Java file on the basis of your logical API. Like you can write the example that I am writing login APIs, right? Uh, reward APIs uh, on the basis of modules also, like like my reward module APIs. Are you getting my point? So your class name should totally depends on your your module or your functionality. Are you getting my point? Why I am giving this name so that you can easily understand that under this class I only cover the get based API. Is it okay? So here you can choose your name name according to your project. Is it okay? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Finish. Yes. So I've created this class in the same way I can create other class also in front of you. Like for creating the uh, post based API, I will write post based API. Test. So here I will include all the post based API test. Third class I will create new class and I will write put based API test, put based API test. Okay, this one. What else is pending? I will try to cover each and every flavor. And third type of API, you know that that is a get, post, put, and delete. Delete based API. So are you getting my point? Why I'm taking this example so that I can easily tell you that how many types of API, how many type of REST API you can call it here. Okay. So I have created three class, four classes. Now one by one, I will give the example. Currently, I'm just creating the structure of the framework. I am not going to the directly onto the REST short part. Now I will take the example of get based API. This is my class. So I will take the example. I have two type of API. I've already shown you. Let me show you again. Uh, where are my web service docs? Web service docs are where? This one. So let me open this one. I will take the example of this one. So you can say I have to automate these type of APIs. So how many APIs you are able to see on the basis of get to one? One is get all student and second is get student by ID. Yes or no? If you keep saying yes or no, I will identify that you are not sleeping and getting my sessions. I hope. Okay. Yes. So yes. what? So what thing I uh, the first thing I want to automate that is get all students. So I will do one thing. I'm going to give the name of my test case like public void and validate get all students API. You can write API also. Okay. You can decide so many test cases for that. Like uh, you are uh, you are going to validate uh, what the specific part of your API. Uh, like get all the students, get a student ID. You are, I will try to create different type of methods on the basis of different type of API. You can create on single API also means if you are want, if you want to create you on the single API, you can create 
multiple separate test cases. I will I will give the example of the main one. Okay. So this I've written. I will write the coding, but before that, tell me whatever I will write within this function that is going to be executed as a test ng test case. But for that, what do we have to do? What we have to do so that this validate get all the student test case should be run as a test ng test case. What we have to do? Add the rate. Yes or no? Yes or no? So you can. So here you will see I have used test and so why I'm telling you that you will see that actually I am creating the framework. Still, I have not written a single line of code as a row. I'm just creating the structure. I have a com org test. I have a com org base. So I will one by one. I will show you the purpose of every package like I've shown you in my Selenium sessions. Same I will show you here. Okay. So this is I've created a structure. In the same way, I can do one thing. If I want to create another, what is the another test case for get based API that can be validate get stone by API. Yes or no? Is it okay? So I have to, actually I'm trying to create two test cases in front of you, but I told you that you can create on the base of single API, you can create multiple test cases. It depends on you that how many test cases you are going to identify. So I have set my, this part. So I will start now, we'll start with the get all strand API. Here you will see for the automation of API using rest assured, the one important class which you need, and that is the main class of the your rest assured API. That is called rest assured library. Okay. When what is that? That is still the name is rest assured. Are you getting my point? This is the main class you can say. And the in this class, basically, you can say most of the functions are defined at static. At the time of Selenium, I told you what is the quality of a static functional property. They can be accessed directly with the name of, tell me, class. Yes or no? Yes. So you can see here when I just given the name of the class rest assured, and when I click on dot, you are able to see that it is showing you so many properties like authentication, base path, base URE class, and you will see lots of functions are defined here. And they have created 99% just like a just like a static one. So you don't need to create the rest assured object, something like that rest assured equal to new rest assured, you know not. You directly can call it. So first function, what you have to call, that is my advice that is called given. When you call this function, which one given, I will advise you should use the first one. Okay, so as Kritika was also asking that Pradeep, if we are going to use some other versions of the uh, rest assured, what will happen? Definitely we are going to get some more feature, but here you will say, still you have so many features here. You can use the given function without the uh, parameter. You can use the second one and you can use the third one. And every function has its own benefit. A benefit is that I will tell you. Okay, so the first thing you have to call the blank one. I'm telling you the easiest way because you are just first time entering into the world of rest assured. So I am trying to tell you that you bet you will get the easiest way to know. So you will see what is the written type of this for given function? Rest assured dot given. Anybody can tell me what is the written type of given function? Request. Request is specific. Yes. So you forget the structure of the uh, uh, eclipse. When I click on funny function, like something like that, what is the, uh, you can say structure. The name of the function is defined first, then colon. After colon, it gives the it go give it give the written type of written the function. Type. And after that, it tells that in which class this function is available. Oh, so in case of in case of get, the function is telling the get function is returning the response type, written type, and this function is available in the rest assured class. If you take the example of given. What is telling the return type is request specific and the, this function is actually the uh, available in the rest assured that we already know but this is the syntax and every time you have to follow and when you have follow you, your life will be easy so it means whenever i'm calling this i can store my result store my reference in a class that is called request specification yes or no so I will advise you that you should give the name of uh, this reference like a request. Okay, you want to give the rest request, that is also good. If you want to get, you can say API request. So uh, it is totally depends on you that what is the best name you want to suit for your, your domain. Okay, you can give the example API request or you can uh, get all API request, whatever. So I'm just giving a standard. Most of the time, this is the best one, that API request. 
Is it okay? So I advise you that you should create this one and just forget about that. You will see after that, whatever you have to do, you have to call this, you have to use this reference API request, and then you will see there are so many methods are there. So many methods are there. So what you have to do, I'm trying to give you a general code that will be apply each and every case. So it will be easy for you. And I'm I'm hundred percent sure when you go to the internet, you will not see such type of code. That you are there, you will see rest assured dot given when then something like that. And trust me, that is very very confusing. I told you what is the purpose of this line now? What is the purpose of this line? The purpose of this line is to create a request object. Are you getting my point? To create request object. So you simply create the request object. Now after creating the request object, it depends on that what what setting, what uh, thing you have to attach in the request. Then, then after attaching all the request requirement, like what I'm saying that requirement means take the example. In case of get, I don't need to apply anything here. No, I don't need to pass any parameter, but in the get stream ID, I need to pass a parameter. Yes or no? In case yes. of, in case of post, you can see that I have to pass some data, not as a parameter. I have to pass some data in the body. So these are called the part of your request. When you set this thing in the request, then it will send the request to the server and give you the response. So all these things, we are going to do it in this particular API request object. In first case, when we are going to automate this one, you will see there is no parameter. Only the URL is there and the other thing is a method. So whenever you are going to call any API, in the API request, first of all, you have to understand that which type of method you have to call. What is the type of method? Get. So in API request, you have to call a method API request dot get. You will see for each and every type of API, like for get, we have a get method and uh, request a specification. And for our post, we have a post method. You will see that is very, very easy. That on the basis of every type of method, you will see post is there. You want to see put is there. Okay. You want to see delete? Yes, delete is there. So in short, what I'm, I want to tell you that whenever you want to call any API, in the API request, you have to decide the name of the function which you have to use on the basis of method. So your method is get. So which function I have to use? Tell me everybody. Get. Get, get method. So why we are using get? Because we know that in our API, the method which it is using that is get. So one thing is completed. This part you have satisfied. Now the thing is that where you will put this URL, so this URL you are going to put as a part of parameter of this get. Within this get function, double quotes, you can pass the URL. Are you getting my point? So you can see here, only two requirements were there. Only two requirements were there that you have to get the map that you have to set and you have to pass the URL. One thing you achieved by uh, just using, uh, selecting the method name and URL you have passed it here. And trust me what will happen when this code will run. Automatically, it will hit the API and will get the response. You need to use the response to validation. That's why you will use a store in a reference. What is the written type of get? Anybody can tell me what is the written type of get? Response. response. Very good. So it means I can store in a response reference variable. Right or wrong? And which reference you have to use? That is also very important. You can see we have Four classes with the name of response. One is IO rest assured package. Second is javex.xml. Third one is org j so. Third one is org j so. We have to use the rest assured one. That you have to make sure. Now I will give the name of the reference variable. Very interesting. This was API request. Here I will say API response. So it actually is because I'm telling you everything in respect of framework. So I'm trying to use everything as standard that make your life easy, right? So now you'll see how easy it is. You have created the request object. Nothing need to be set there. Everything you have to apply. Everything you have to apply with the help of method and you are that already you have given. So when this code will run, you will get the response in the API response. Now how you will see. So you can see in the response reference, or you can say reference object, you have so many functions to get the results. So your response mainly what response contains? What things mainly response contains? The body and the header. That are the two main things. Yes and no? 
So if you want to fetch the response is already with you at line number 16 that it will get at runtime. You want to see the body, you can write response dot body and that you will write dot. Why we are writing the dot? Last time somebody asked me this thing also. When I'm saying response dot body, so it will give the body. So I'm saying that from the body, I want to see the content of the body. So it will return the body as a object. So if you want to see the content as a string, we will call a function that is called as a string. Is it okay? You got the reason why I'm calling this thing as a string so that it will return the body, but the content will be written in the form of object. I want to print that object. I want to see that object just like a string. So I'm saying as a string. This is printing as a string. So can, you can store in a, a string variable. I can see response body. Is it okay? So now I want to see, uh, I will tell you about the validation part also, but don't worry before that. Let me show you the easiest part. Response body, I'm going to put it here in the this section and let me run this. Okay, so I will do one thing for the timing. I can disable the this one because nothing is written in the second test case. So how you can disable? This is your revision also. How we can disable any test case? Enable equal to false. Now what will happen? It will run. So you can comment also the but the best way is that whenever you want to enable, you can comment. Simply you can do you can comment the test this one. But the best approach is that you should use the proper attributes enabled. And I will write enabled equal to true. Whatever you want to run, you will write enabled equal to true. And whatever test case you want do want to run, you will write enabled. For the time being, nothing is written here. So I'm using enable equal to false here. Now let me run it here and see what is happening. I will run right as a test and test. Uh, now tell me in the console, are you able to see the response? If you want, I can copy the response in a notepad for you so that you can see because my API is retaining all the records from the database and you can see how many records are there. Are you able to see yes or no? One student, are you able to see yes or no? If you want to see, I can show you in the structure format. Enter, one student, where is the second student? Are you able to see the student detail? Yes or no? Yes. You can see I have given separated three student detail. One, two, three. So it means it is returning the response. So you can see how easy it to call the APIs and getting the response. And trust me, with the help of any tool, that is a little bit tricky because you have to configure a few things. But here, everything is very straightforward. Now I will give the example of second one. How you can validate get stream by ID. So for the time, I will do one thing. Same thing I told you. Anytime, anytime you want to call any type of API, this should be the common code. This should be the common code. So I've written this common code. I've created my request object, right? Now the question is that, which function I have to call it here? Now tell me, in get all students, we have used get. What function we are using? What method type we are using in get stream ID? Tell me. Get method. Yes, we are using get. So also we have to select which method here in the rest store. Get. get. Same thing we have to use it here. And in the parameter, as a parameter in the double quotes, we have to pass the URL. Your... Yes or no? Yes. So I will copy the URL. Everybody will speak. I'm able to hear only the voice of one girl. I want to hear everybody. If you are not getting, you can ask me any point of time. Everybody is getting. Deepak, you are getting. Harshita, you are getting. Yes, yes, Pradeep. Krishna, yes, you are getting. Nortaja, you are getting. Yes, yes, yes. Great. So everybody is getting. So let me come yes. back. Yogita, also you are getting. Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, everybody is getting. So whenever you are getting in the between, you can say yes, no. Okay. Otherwise, if you are, I feel that you are sleeping. Huh? So let me come back here. So here you will see in the get. In this uh, API URL, you have to select the get method. So on the base of that method, you have to decide the here API request get method. Then you have to pass the URL. But here you will see what is happening. In this URL, you are able to see this one, curly braces ID. And what is the mean of this curly braces ID? Whenever you are able to see anything 
within the curly braces in your url that is called that is called path parameter okay. that is called parameter and there are two type of parameters are there there are two type of parameter i will tell you the example of both one whenever you will see this type of parameter like this one parameter can pa can be passed in the url in two ways one is you pass the parameter as a path of your url like slash then you are using curly braces and then you are writing id it means you are passing the id as a path parameter and second thing i will show you then whenever you want to pass a parameter it totally depends that how your api is developed second type is question mark in the url question mark and id equal to something like that are you getting my point this thing parameter is known as the this way of passing the parameter is known as path param and this way of passing the parameter is known as query param you guys are also awesome. this is known as query param so for both the scenario you have two options when you have to pass this one you have one method that is called path param and when you have to pass the value in this way as a parameter in the short there is another function that is called simple param so we have to pass path param okay so in api request you will do one thing api request because every setting where you will do every setting should be the part of request then only it will hit the request so we will say path param are you able to see the p a t h path param are you able to see this one okay yes. so, so in path param you have to call this path param first one and the parameter what is the name of the parameter which needed the value id and the parameter value you have to pass the actual value are you getting my point yes so now for example i can do one thing here i can show you for which record you want to uh, fetch the uh, you can say detail i can take the example of any one here i can fetch the record i can show you i can show you about this one student and i can show you about this student also so i'll take the example of 9 so in case of 9 what is the detail age is 66 name is neha subject is jmita so let me do one thing i want to pass this id as a parameter so let me put it here my okay so what will happen all the requirements are fulfilled all the requirement fulfilled method we have already configured as a part of function name url we have given and in the url we have also set the value of path parameter okay. so so we are ready to call the response and simply this code is very common simply write api response and when you got the response simply call this one to convert the object request uh, you can say body object into the string so i'm going to this time i'm going to run this thing i am not going to run both the function together so let me make it false and this function i'm trying to make it is it fair enough why should write the previous when we have already run it one by one we are learning okay so let me run it and see what is the response yes or no you can see in the console are you able to see the detail yes or no yes so in this yes. way you have learned that how you can use the rest assured api in a very very simple and again i'm saying that i'm not saying that this is the only way but trust me this is the easiest way i can bet on that reason is that i explored so many things from the internet and found that uh, usually people try to write rest assured dot given then then and when something else it makes your structure very complicated here a structure is very simple request object you have to create and then on the request api request object whatever set, uh, setting you have to set whatever setting you have to mention that you will do it here and at last you will call the method on the base of method which is mentioned in your api so i will come to the example of third one delete one so for delete i have already created a separate api class for that so let me do one thing let me create a basic function there so i'm going to create a basic function there in the delete same thing i will do i will create the basic structure of the function and the name of the function i will say validate delete student is it okay yes so i'm saying ah uh, you said yes you are tired <laughs> validate delete no. student not okay so validate that's why i've shown you the comment of that person on my video uh, everybody should be excited okay validate delete student api okay so how what i have to do again here tell me every time we have to write a simple code what is that rest assured dot given yes or no yes so that's one thing i've make made your life easy you have to write this code very very common 
your life is very easy you can actually remember every time that i have to create a request uh, rest assured dot given i store in a object that is called request specifically then you have to call a method here so start from here you have to call a method which method what is the method type of api delete, delete. and in this delete we have to pa pass this url so copy this url go to here call the delete method and in the delete method you have to pass the url how simply yes or no yes now what is the requirement in the url you have to set the value of a so ah this is again easy for you you already know how you can achieve it with the help of this one yes or no yes now you have set it here you are ready to fly and what is the else you have need uh, simply you have to write this code response and then print the response okay validation part i will tell you one by one so you have done this thing here then you have to do rest of the part of printing the bar so currently i am uh, trying to tell you uh, that how you can call different of api and then i will proceed with the validation part and then we will proceed with the extend report part. okay so now you will see it is working or not let me run it here how we how we can verify that it is running fine two things it should give the response in a proper way what is expected from the api you are getting the message is student deleted successfully yes or no yes and we can verify one more way how let me go back here and this time right. if i yes if i will call this method again api this time it should return id do not exist yes or I no yes because i deleted the same api let me run it here so now you can say you make the automation this id do not exist you got this one yes or no yes so you have automated the release page api so i was telling you on the base of validation you can validate so many things so on the base of validation you can create multiple test cases of this single delete api but i will show you that every validation i will cover under one test case okay because we are learning you want you can make separate test cases for that so we have learned delete based now i will come to the post based okay so again in the post based what i will do i have to create a function what is the i have to create a test ng function public validate create student is it okay yes you are awesome you always reply other persons are trying to sleep okay validate create student api still if people are sleeping you know <laughs> and and above this function we have to use the test ng annotation at the rate just joking yeah so uh, this time voice is coming great so now function is ready only we have to write a code to call the post base api again now sometimes you will say the rest api is very boring people say that it is very tough to learn but trust me you are going to say for the it is very boring what we have to learn everything is very easy request i have created and after that in the request we have to decide the method everybody know in this post create student api what is the method post post so we have to call the method post yeah this time i have i, list, I listen two voices great so i have to use post method and then we have to pass this url so i will go to here api request dot is there any post method yes post is there call this one and pass the parameter this one okay this is ready to go right now uh, what else you have to set uh this time you have body. to set a specific thing body. body this time you don't need to pass anything in the parameter nothing as a query parameter nor as a path parameter you path have to set the data in the body so i will tell you the easiest way okay you can also do this thing in the several ways but the easiest way is that copy the test data in the body and call a method of the request that is called body api api request object dot body you will get this method body which is taking you will see so many methods are related to the body body which is taking body in terms of void body in terms of file body in terms of input stream body in terms of object body in terms of a string body and so many things are there i will tell you the easiest way to use the body string easiest way that is so pradeep yeah you yeah. can use any type right uh, basically any the byte type we generally use in our uh, actual development of the apis uh, right yeah, in our commercial yeah 
yeah reason is that because what happens that whenever you try to uh, use the byte they have to traverse the data they have to traverse the data from yeah, one place yeah. on but here what we are doing we are actually not preparing any content we are not preparing any content we are only fetching the data that code is already written that the data will be sent in the form of bytes are you getting my point so i am just putting the yeah. test data so my test data the easiest way you can put the test data in the form of string that i have done here so this is the easiest way you have already yeah. written yeah, yeah. Uh, Any, uh, yeah. if it is in file we need to uh, send through a path yes right? yes in that case what happens if it is a file first of all you have to create the object of the file right you have to create the object of the file 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 equal to new file and in the object of constructor of file you have to pass the path when it will convert into the file object that file object or reference you have to pass in the body is it okay yeah thanks okay. and actually indirectly what it contains what that file contains the whole this xml getting my point yes so instead of creating us another uh, another layer in my uh, you can say test case why i should do this so is i directly put it here but if you want to store this thing in a test data file in that case that is the good option right you can store that test data something like this in a file and you can pass the reference is it okay yeah okay so here you will see this is the test data in the test data you can change the value according to a requirement like for the my age i want to make it uh, 77 uh, i want to put name as a ganesh g a n e s h a and the subject i can take it jmeter that is okay okay that is all okay. so what we have done in the api request so all the requirements are fulfilled or not just see here method post already i have taken just like a method name so this requirement is fulfilled okay second a uh, url have already passed as a part of your method parameter you have to set something in the body that you have already set so all the things are there anybody can tell me anything is left here anybody can tell me anything is left here uh, you guys are printing sorry? printing stay no printing i will tell you printing that is good that i am going to write the rest of the things like printing so let me write the printing so Press yeah, uh, I will write the response, and then I will just print the body part also. That whatever response you are getting, I will print it here. But I am asking very important thing that I have told you in the header. when I yes, I what why we have to need the give the header. I will tell you the reason is that whenever you are passing any data in the parameter, like take the example, whenever you are passing any data as a path parameter, so in the path parameter. You don't need to tell whether you are passing a XML or JSON because in the path parameter, query parameter, always data is passed as a text. Are you getting my point? You don't rewrite something in the parameter. Kabi bhi, uh, in, in the, you can say whenever you are uh, using any URL, in the URL passing any parameter, you don't write in such a way that I'm writing uh, this one ID like JSON and sometimes you are writing XML. Are you getting my point? Because in the path parameter, whenever, whenever you are writing any data that is the standard format curly braces and id getting my point no specific format you have to give whether you are you want to pass the parameter as a xml or json because xml and json is only applicable whenever you are passing the data in the body getting my point yes so you will see i'm going to run this here i'm going to run your post base api you will see it will give the error you will see it will give the error and i will show you the reason of error as well as I will try to, somebody has already given me the answer. That is the header one. Somebody already given me the answer. You will see, it is giving you some error. You want to see the error? And anybody can again try to tell me. It is telling you unsupported media type. So what do you deem, what do you mean by unsupported media type? I, in the in the in my Selenium, in my SOAP guys session, you will already get this thing that unsupported media type always you get whenever you are using the wrong content type or if you are not telling that what type of data you are sending in the body of your request so this is the mandatory thing that whenever you are calling api and you are passing any data in your request body you have to tell the type of content whether it is xml or it is a js that is a mandatory thing so where i'm going to set it here api request then i will write api request and dot and that is called two things you can do one option is that called header. You can use header. So in header, you have an option. What is that? You have to give the header name. And second is that header value. You don't need to write this additional header values. I'm using the simple one. 
So you have to pass two things. One is header name and the second thing is a call header value. So anybody can tell me what is the header required to tell the type of data which you are sending in the request. What is the name of that header? I've shown yeah. you this thing and that is called content type. Ah, you guys, I understand that you guys have not watched my video because I have not uploaded. Okay, but today I'm trying to tell you same thing in a proper manner. Okay, content type header. So here, this is the, there is a specific, uh, you can say, uh, uh, syntax for that. This is the content type. So you have to write in this way. Uh, this way. This is the content type header name. Content type, hyphen, content type. So I will go here. And the name of the header is content type. And in the value, you have to write a specific thing. That is called A-P-P-L-I-C-A-T-I-O-N application slash accent. Are you getting my point? So yes. if you will write this thing, it will run. If you still you will do a, do a wrong thing that application slash JSON, if you will write, okay? If you will still write application slash JSON, in that case also you will get the same error. Getting my point? But now the thing is that why you will get the response because your content type, you are telling my content type is application slash XML as well your content type is also XML. XML. And third thing, your API also support the XML. All the things, things are necessary. Your API should support XML. That's why you are passing the XML and you have to give the XML. Getting my point? So now yes. let me run it. Let me run and see it is giving the result or not. It should give the message a student created successfully. And you are getting the message 2954. Yes or no? Yes. So you have seen that how you can call the post page, post page CPI. Now the now the another one is put based API. So here you will see in the post uh, put based API, you will see uh, so many flavors of the setting. That is very, very best one. So let me go ahead. I will copy the name of the function from here. Put based API. So I'm creating a function name. Validate update is today. Okay. Update is today. So again, uh, now till that time, I think you have board. Pradeep again, I am group. Pradeep again, we have to write the same code. Every time you have to, we have to write a code. Let me close other type of files here. Very common code. Again, Pradeep, then I have to call one thing. Choose the method name. We have to choose the method name. Pradeep, how we'll set? Simple. Which API you are going to automate? Update is true. What is the name of the method type? And this is the URL. So copy the URL call the put function put is there and pass the url sure. simple just to me again uh, why i'm again again saying nobody can tell you the easiest way to call it. you can go and find any video there this is the easiest and i will show you the validation part also the easy so this is done this is done so you can also copy rest of the things which are very common that whenever it will call you can you can get the response here and then you can print the response here in the form of body, right? You can achieve it. Now the question is that, what is needed to be set in the request? Method you have given, URL you have given, in the URL any parameter is there? Yes. So it means we have to set the parameter in the request. So we know that how we can set API request dot path param. And we have already done this thing. So let me do a thing here. API request path param. One thing is done. Okay. So because we are going to update, so ID should be exist. So I think we should use some up uh, some existing ID. I think one is already there. Let me check here. Let me check here. Uh yes, ID one. ID one was there and name was Anku. Okay, so let me go here. So now let me come back here. So ID we have selected one. This is done. What else we have to set in request? What data we want to update? Right? The updated data. Yes or no? What name, what age, what a subject, whatever we want to update. Actually, it is a test data in the body. So we again take the help of API request. And we will say API request dot body. 
body. <laughs> Very good. Uh, everybody is replicating me. Great. Uh, say something. Okay. Can everybody say some? In the same time, everybody can say yes. Say yes, everybody. Yes. Yes. Still yes. Everybody. Yes. I want to hear that everybody is listening the things. Okay. I tried. I have made the rest assured easy. That's why you are guys are very silent. Otherwise, everybody, Pradeep, tell me this thing. Pradeep, tell me I'm not getting thing. Okay. So let me. In the body, we have to pass this. Test data. Now, whatever you want to update for the ID one. The name was, what was the name? The name was Uncle. Let, the name let me hear only. I will update the age. 22. Let me make 23. And subject, I will change rest assured instead of rest assured, test in G. Okay. So in the age, I'm going to update 23. And uh, in, the, in the, 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 when I take the example of any girl, I always conscious about the age because I have update, I'm going to update the, you can see name of Anku. So let me write Anku. So in one match, Anku is there. So Anku can, anytime Anku can ask me that if I have taken my age 34. So Anku is there. Age is 23. Uh, let me change the subject to the test engine. Okay. But if one question, the values which you don't need to change, you will put it same as, right? As uh, previous. Yes, yes. Actually, that is that is what is happening. In my case, yeah. uh, my API is written in a way that you have to pass every parameter. If you don't want to change, let it be in the old way. Let it with the old value and whatever you want to change, you have to modify it. Sometimes what happens that when the API is created, you have to only pass the data which you want to modify. Are you okay. getting my point? Okay. So, so only, here you cannot put question mark for which you don't want to update. No. No, no. Because I told you that what is happening, it totally depends on that. What type of data, sample data it is expecting. So my, uh, you can see API is written there. So it is expecting all the data. Otherwise, what happens that whenever you want to update any data in your API, like for take the example of student, what happens? Most of the say is API support this thing. Let's say they said that these, all the texts are not mandatory. Are you getting my point? These are the all texts, age, name, subject, all okay. are not mandatory. Whatever you want to update, just put it there. You rest of the things you can delete it. You don't need to pass it. Are you getting my point? Okay, so passing, here also we can do this. Yes, yeah, we can no, only. Yeah, so only the thing is that if you are if you are able to do it, only the thing is that your API is written in this way. Yes or no? Because in the API, what should be there? Age is not mandatory, name is not mandatory, subject is not okay. mandatory. Whatever you want to update, you can pass it. So this is written in the API. Getting my point? Okay, okay. So but I again, we are if you are updating with same values, means it will overwrite again, correct? Ah, yes, overwrite it again. So if you okay. if some somebody has written the API in this way, the developer written this way that you don't need to pass every value, whatever you want to update, only simple pass that value. So when you will write age 23, so rest of the value is still there, like name is Anku, subject is there, but age will be updated to the 20. Are you getting my point? I have again I told you because this API is developed by me using a wizard. So I have not so much control on my API that uh, that you have to pass this one or this one. So at the time, uh, time of developing the API, I written the API in such a way that you have to pass the all the parameter you want don't want to change. So just use the old one. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that is totally different. You will see that your sample data can be given in any format. Like okay. Now, when I've written this thing, one thing is pending. Everybody know recently I've used it. What thing is pending now? Ah, guys, yes or no? Whenever you are passing, whenever you are passing any data in the body, it is mandatory to pass the content type. And here you have seen in this port based API, all the flavors you are passing in the parameters, you are setting in the header, you are passing in the body. So this is the best API where you are learning each and every. So let me run it here and see your data is updated or not. Yes, you can check the message here and we can check from where we can check from the get yeah, student by ID also. Uh, ID, let me put it one. And here you can also see the response that that is updated or not. So let me run here. Yes or no? Age is 23. Name. Subject is test. Yes or no? Yes. So mainly you will see that 
I have told you about the get based API. I told you about the post based API. I told you about put based API. I told you delete by me. Now one confusion is there. In the future, in the future, what happens if new type of method will be introduced? For example, somebody told you that in some time there are other methods also used. Like anybody heard about the patch? Anybody yes. heard? So patch is also type of you can say method. In case what happens that if patch is there, let me do one thing. API request dot p a t. Are you able to see the patch method? Yes or no? Yes. yes. So now how easy I make your learning. You don't need to understand that what type of methods are uh, defined. Uh, you don't need to learn each and every method. If your API, if your API is telling, always this information will be available in your document. And that is the mandatory document, uh, mandatory details that the developer you have uh, need to uh, pass to you, or you can say update to you that this is the API, this is the method, and this is the server. So if now, for you, just think about that. If somebody has given you this URL and saying it is a patch, so definitely what you have to do, you have to use the patch method. Yes and no? And everything yes. will be same. And everything will be same. You will call the patch method. You will pass the URL. And else you have to find it in the patch. You have to pass some parameter in the URL. If it is, you can set it in the same way. Something is passed in the body. Yes, you can set it. So now tell me, for you, automating the rest when you are automating the api using the rest assured it is a blocker for you because every for every method you for every type of method which is used in the api you have a method in the show yes or no you don't need to so you can so every type of api if you understand try to understand from the starting that every type of api actually automated in the same manner only you have to decide that what is the need in your api which method you have to use what URL you have to pass, you have to pass any parameter or you have to pass any content in the body. If the content is in the body, you have to pass the content type. So every, every you can see in each, each and every, you have to follow the same pattern. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So, so if one, have, uh, can you just uh, explain about the patch, like the patch function? Yeah, patch function actually, again, the thing is that, uh, for example, get based API, we usually it is said that whenever you are calling the get uh, API, you are using the get method in your API. The purpose of get is to fetch some record. Are you getting my point? To fetch some record. That is the purpose of yeah. get based API. When you are calling the post based API, basically the post based API uh, use the post method and the purpose of post method to create some data in the application. When you are going to create some new data and okay. uh, what is the use of put based api when you have some data already in your application and you want to update that that is called put based api okay now the release date api that is also used whenever you want to delete some data from your application you use delete now the question is what is patch now the patch is something like what do you mean by anybody can tell me what do you understand by the word patch modify i uh, actually patch is something like that when you are modifying the small part of the some content yes or no you can take you can take the very funny example uh, uh suppose take the example you have one jeans and that jeans is somewhere torn you use a patch there yes or no to hide that yes. particular part <laughs> that is funny example but that is called patch you are not going to update the whole jeans you are going to update a particular that part where it is torn are you getting my point so patch is when you are when you want to update a specific yeah. or small part of your data then patch should be used Getting my point? You can use the put method also, and the best is patch. Getting my point? Yes. Okay. So now again, the thing is that that is not decided by us. That is totally decided by the developer because developer use whatever developer method use. We are just testing it. Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. But yeah, you should know the. Uh, you can say uh, what is the best use of the method. So best use I've already told you. Now totally depends on the. Now, if the client is saying that you have to give your suggestions also, then you can say if developer is using put based method for the updating a small part of the application, you can say uh, you can, you are trying, you are achieved it with the help of put. But I will suggest according to the standards, you should use the patch method. Getting my point? Is it okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, so now you can see here you have learned that how you can call any type of API. Now I told you that now if I'm not telling about the patch, I'm not telling about the other type of API, you don't need to worry about that because the pattern is same. You select the method, pass the URL, 
and whatever you have to set, you can set it here. Is it okay? Okay. Now I'll tell you one thing. Sometime you will see that in the few APIs, you will see sometime you have to pass some token. Yes or no? It is the case. Sometimes few APIs yeah. expect some token. Now the question is that where you are going to pass the token. So actually this is totally depends on the developer also that where it is going to, it is going to pass the token in the body on the header. 99.9% .9 cases that the token is passed in the header because header is used for authentication. Yes and no. Or authorization. Whenever you want to verify two things like authentication or authorization, you use some tokens for that. Actually, you can say use this token for your security purpose. So if you have a token, definitely your API developer will tell you one thing that the name of the my a token header is something like that. API token. You can take the example. This is the name of the header. And then he will tell you that where from where you can get the token. Uh, suppose take the example. Token is something like that. Mainly token are written as bearer. Four, five, something like the X, Y, something like that. Are you getting my point? So he will provide you the information. This is the name of the uh, security token is API token. This is the key header name and this is the value. So how you are going to set it? Simple. Here you will write this one. API header. Yes or no? I, I actually, I don't have any API which is using header. So I will, I'm just giving the example. In the header, you have to pass two things. Name of the key and the value. So he told you this is the API token key at the header. So go and pass in the header. And what is the value? Whatever value he is giving you, just pass in the value. It is easy, yes or no? Yes. And trust me, you, didn't know, you don't need to learn so other things, right? Because your API contains only two parts or you can say three parts of the API. It contains the URL that you can pass some data in the URL. First place, Second, you can pass some data in the header. And third, you can pass the data in the body. Uh, 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 can anybody tell me, is there any way to pass the data other than URL, header, or body? These are the only three ways. Yes or no? Yes. So it means your developer will tell you that where you have to pass the data, you can simply tell you. I told you about that, how you can set the data in the header, how you can set the data in the body, and how you can set the data in the path parameter. Yes or no? So if any one of you want that I should show you about the this token thing, you can send me or I will try to arrange some API that use the token. Okay, but definitely that will be a real live, real live API. So if you got this thing, I will show you. That is easy. Same thing you have to do it. Is it okay? Yes. Okay, so now you can say I have covered the API part. Second thing, we have to cover the validation part. And before that, I will tell you one thing also that you can cover the validation part. So validation also can be achieved in so many ways. So I will tell you about the, first of all, I will tell you about the validation. Uh, you can say validation uh, in a simple manner. If you have a good, uh, you can say a good uh, Java skills, you can make your validation by your own. Okay, that will be a little bit tricky, but it will be very good for you. And then I will show you that rest assured also provide a inbuilt platform for the validation that is called validable response. You will learn an API, you will learn a class in the rest assured package that is called validable response. Getting my point? Okay, so today I'm going to give you a, uh, some idea that how you can use your JavaScript to create your own validation. For example, for example, I want to validate that in my result, when I'm getting the response for the ID, I am getting the name Anku. Can anybody verify? Anybody can use their Java skills like if and else equal to something like that to verify that the, in the response for the ID, I for the ID one, I'm getting the name Anku. Can anybody tell me? These type of questions are, can we ask in the logical program? Can we tell me yes or no? Say yes or no. You can say at least no. Okay, nobody's ready to say no. Okay, you can say, okay, I want to listen that everybody's listening me carefully. At least you can say, tell me. Okay, say okay. Everybody say okay. 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 So I verified okay. that you are listening. 
<laughs> so I verified that you are listening. So I will tell you how you can do. You can use your Java string. Now tell me one thing. The whole string you are able to do this one. Actually, this is stored in where? In this response body. Yes or no? That's why it yes. is printing here. So now you can see. I cannot, I can validate with the help of inbuilt function. But before that, I love to use my coding so that I can test my skills that, okay, logically I'm good or not. So I can achieve without that. Also. How? Just here. This is your whole string, which you are getting in the response body. And you have to verify whether the value of name attribute, it is Anku. So how you can verify that the value of name attribute is Anku? You can extract the value of name. How you can extract with this string? Simple, just see here. Response body. I will call a function that is called substring. Yes or no? I will call a function substring. And in the substring, I will write first thing. I will write begin index. Now tell me, what will be the begin index to find the value of Anku? Name. Index of name. Yes or no? I can do yes. one thing. Begin index. How you will get the begin index? Simply in your index, begin index will actually be the in this way you can write. Oh, sorry, not this one. I will write this thing. You can do one thing. Let me create a separate uh, variable for that. That will be more good. Index integer begin index will equal to response body dot index of name. Yes or no? Yes. So I'm telling you tricky way. I can tell you directly also that will save my time. But trust me, I want to make your coding also. Now tell me when it will return, it will give the position of this one name. Yes or no? Yes. yes. But you have to start getting the value after that from A. So it means can I add one index plus one? Yes or no? So what will the value of Anku? It will be read after name plus one. Yes or no? Yes. If you are not getting, let me remove one so that you understand. Now, what will be the end index? Can anybody tell me what will be the end index? Tenth. Uh, end end index. Tenth. End index will be the slash this one. Slash Very good. You guys are awesome. Oh, I can show you. I can show you that you can do one thing. <clears throat> this is begin index. End so let me do one thing. Let me print this thing here. Here I will say create a value string name. Name or you can say name from response. So let me do one thing. Let me print this value. Name from response. Let me print it here and see what you are getting here. And then you understand you have to use a plus one there. What value you are getting? You are getting name and anku. Yes or no? Yes. Because your index is starting from name. So name is also considered. Your index should start from A. A. Yes or no? So here you start plus one. You Now you got my trick? Yes or yes. no? Yes. And trust me, you have validated this thing. Now you can say anything you want to validate the value of any node. You can validate. Yes or no? And you have used your Java skills. You have used your Java skills. Yes or no? Yes. yes. So I can do this thing also, but it is trying to make your coding very, very, uh, you can say very, it is trying to make, or it is trying to give you an uh, option that you can utilize your mind that you have existing thing. And now what is happening when somebody has already written a validable response class, actually indirectly, they have also doing the same thing. They have created a function there. They are going to validate this thing directly, but indirectly before the scene, they have written same thing. So why you don't practice for that? That's why you have learned the string class. That's why you have learned the if-else. Now you can simply do one thing. How you can make a validation? If. Now tell me, this is your name from response or you can say actual actual name. Yes or no? This is your actual name. And you can create a string, something like that. I'm telling you the way how it is validated string. You can say expected name. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. And you are expected, you know that for the ID, you are expecting the data A N K U. So this you are expected. So now how the validation will be there? Actual, you can say Actual. expected. Expected name equal dot equals equal. actual. Oh sorry, actual. Now you have to write what? 
if it is the okay then pass else fail yes or no yes and you can use other thing also if you want to use this thing yes you are good to go but you have already one thing in the test and g you have already used as any that is called what is that assert 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 equals yes or no yes assert there is a assert equal function that can compare to boolean's value that can compare to string value so your need is to string value so you can use the string version uh, this one this one this one this one so what you have to pass actual name expected name yes or no yes or no and yes. let me write your validation should be the last code in your test case so i will do printing here then now you'll see it is going to print fine <clears throat> let me run this and see this time you have used a validation so your report will be generated with pass or fail let me run it here oh we have written found still in the name we are getting some wrong value we are not using the bracket no 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 let me do one thing let me do one thing expected anku but found name name why it is given oh sorry 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 this is also wrong thing if i am using one that is also creating a problem anybody can tell me why it is creating the problem is p plus one here because for using plus one when i was using plus one actually it is skip this place and it start is one yes or no are you getting my point in the name when i am saying index of name so it got the index what is the position of name the first position this one yes or no and then it is taking the whole one with the angular bracket so actually when you are starting in the index you don't need to one add one you have to add the number of character which is in the name how many characters are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 Six. Are you getting my point? Yes. Or you can write in the easiest way that you have to index the index plus you can write in the double quotes name and you can write dot length. I'm trying to make it a little bit easy. So whatever will be the length of each, you have to add one more. Are you getting my point? if you are not getting let me tell you the logical reason that's why i'm saying that you should run your logical concept also now you will see it is running fine or not it's still it is fine still there is some okay we don't need to okay length we have written so we don't need to write it this one plus one already length have covered so let me write it. it is working fine so now i will tell you why i have written logically this thing i will show you just try to understand this thing this is the whole output yes or no today i am going to tell you about the string manipulation this whole string yes or no yes when i will say when i want to extract this value anku how we can extract we know that anku is uh, you can say uh, covered by the name so when i will give the index of name it will pick the index of the name and what is will be the index of the first place it is starting yes or no yes so the name of the when i will get the index of name suppose it is returning 6 6 means it is giving the position of first character in the name yes or no but i have to start my reading from this character yes or no so i do one thing i have got the index of name then also i skip the all the character which is written in the name used in name so that it start from here so i have started the begin index that is index of the name plus whatever character we is used in the name that is length are you getting my point yes or no yes okay so i can give the example if you are not getting so for other types also so for other, other other type you can also use the same format let me show the example of let me show same thing for other thing copy 
So I have to use the same standard. Suppose you want to verify the value of age. So what is the tag name of age? Age. So you will write age, age. Every name should be replaced by age. And here you write expected age like 23. 23. Okay. So here you will write because you are using again two times. So you can again do one thing. Why don't you use same variable? Already. Oh, oh but the problem. Yeah. You got it. Actual name you are got. Okay. You can use the same one. Okay, variable you should make different. Expected age. And it will be actual age. Prarib, I didn't get that uh, counting that length one. Can you? Yes, I will. Come I to lost that. the connection. Okay, oh, yeah, I will come to that part also. I will come to that part also. Okay, so this is the actual. So what will be your assertion? Your assertion will be expected age and actual age. Okay. So this will be the reason. So actually you have written a common code. Whatever is the name of the tag, you have to get the length of, and then you have to add on this. Okay. So Murtaja, here you have to tell one thing. You have to tell one thing. When I will try to find the index of name in this whole string, you can tell me what will be the index. Okay. You can tell me one thing. I'm trying to make your life easy. So everybody will get. Suppose this is the string. This is the only string. If I will say index of name, what will be the index of name is in this one? You can tell me. What is the index of yeah. name? What is the index? What is the index of this whole text in this string? It will be the header. It will be zero. Zero. Because, because string starts from zero. Because uh, now I can um, add one more thing. Suppose some data is already written. Here it is written as student. I don't want to write big, uh, you can say data. So let me write one more tag. R is there. And here R is also there, for example. Now, can you tell me what will be the index of name? Zero, one, two. two. And Three. after that, you are considering the whole thing for the index. So index will be? Three. Very good. It is okay. Index is three. So here what I have done in my code, I have find the index age. So in my case, what I will get, I will get three. That is okay. Then I have got the index of slash name. What you will get it here? Yes or no? What you will get? You can count. Zero. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then it is whole thirteen. Yes or no? So end index will be thirteen. Yes or no? Yes. Now yes. tell me one thing. You have got the start index, which is actually the index of name, and end index you got the index of slash name. If I will call this function substring begin is you have got it and you got it now tell me when i will try to fetch the string starting from the begin three and ending from 13 what text you will get tell me you will get what you will get tell me Uncle. tell me like Uncle. no Uncle, you N -A -M -E. yes you will N -A -M -E. get n a m e slash reason is that try to understand you have get the index of name. So in, in case of index of name, it will consider the first place where index was started. So you get the index of actually name index is same as the index of this curl, this angular bracket. So when you start from three, actually start from there, this one, N, A, M, E, this one. So it will return actually this value. Getting my point, this will return this yes. value. But I want to get the value of only Anku. So I have make a trick that the big index of a name is already three. I will add from where the name length is completed. So I added the length of name. And what is that? Getting my point? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So if my index is six, I added six plus three. 
So if you will get the value, this time bigger index will be nine and end index will be 13. So actually value start from A, N, K, K, U. Murtaja, you are getting my concept? Yes, yes. So actually whenever you are trying to get the index of name, you are getting that you are getting the index of this place? No, you are getting the index of this one where it is starting and it is, it is three. So in the substring, it will start printing from here. So I make a trick. Index starting of this plus add the length of this whole string name. So automatically the cursor will go to the this place. Getting my point? Do one thing. Try to write this code with multiple strings. You can use this code with, try to do one thing. Just take a hard coded string here and apply this substring with the help of this. And you will see the answer. Getting my point? Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is just like, a, you can say, I want to check your logic. So that's why I've written this thing. In this way, you can make your programming very, very good. Otherwise, in the next session, I will show you the validation. So I'm just giving a glimpse of that. Then I will come. So whenever you want to make a validation, you have to make a little trick thing. Let me do one thing. Let me delete this part. So validation you can do in this way also. But I will tell you the other ways which is already defined in test. Uh, you can say defined in dress issue. So how you can make a validation? Just see here. Whenever you are getting a response, you are getting the body from response. Yes or no? You are getting this response. You are getting the body from the API response. Yes or no? Yes. So don't actually don't return. Don't get the body before that. Your API response also contains a function that is called then. That is called then. And then. what is the return type of this then function? Validable response. It returns a reference of a class that is called validable response. And this function then is available in a class that is called validatable. So when I call this function validable response, oh, sorry, when I call this function then, it will return an object of variable response. So I'll do one thing. I will store in a variable response, reference variable, validatable response, this one. And you will see the magic. Uh, here I will give say this, you can say this was API response. Now then function actually applies on the response and provide some more function so that you can apply validation directly. So it actually provides some inbuilt function for the validation. Getting my point? Yes. So I will say validable response. I can get some variable suggestion for that. Validable V response, or you can say validable response. Let me write validable response. Now you will see when you call it, you will get so many functions are there. Valuable response, let me write valuable response dot and so many methods are how you can verify. You can verify the response from the header. You can verify the response from the body. So before giving that example, before calling the actual method, I will show you that other what other things you can verify from your response without using the valid response. That I will show you in the tomorrow session. Is it okay? Okay. So in the tomorrow session, we will cover the validable response part and we'll show you that how using these inward method, you can get rid of writing these type of coding, which you have written right now, like, uh, like a uh, substring, something like that. Okay. So you can get rid of that. So we'll learn this thing tomorrow. Okay. I hope you like the sessions. We will meet. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. So Good night. Everybody is, I'm getting the voice of everybody. Laugh last time. Can you laugh before leaving? Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Good night. I hope you will revise. I will try to upload this video on the YouTube because it's very, very awesome. Okay. And hope you will uh, do the same thing tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Bye.